uh, this is one of those games uh, with slow development progress. Okay, and the team tried to make uh, to put their visions and ideas inside the game. So. If you grow fast, you're more community driven. And uh, when uh, the majority is crying, oh, it's not working, you need to fix that all the time. So, all that cool stuff, okay, that really cool and fancy stuff, will be every time in the background. So, that, that's my opinion here. Uh, that's why slowly growing is, is better than faster growing. Uh, okay, so it started. So, okay, guys, welcome to the first episode of the uh, no, um, podcast for the Alfine Fist YouTube channel. And uh, we have with us uh, the uh, founder, CEO, Patrick, as well as one of our players and scholars as well, which is uh, Stefan. So um, I'm not too sure what to call this podcast. Like I was thinking along the names of the uh, Alfine Hero cast. What do you think, Patrick? Is it? Is that fine? <laughs> yeah, it's it's fine, yeah. Alfine Hero Cast or Alfine Cast or something like that. Because we are going to do games other than Wonder Hero, right? In the long term? Um, For the long term, I think Wonder Hero is our first priority. Um, okay. We have some, some other games um, mm. we are interested in. Okay. So like maybe I'll just Gates call it... Eternity, yeah. Or, so so um, since we have Wonder a variety Foundation. of games... Wonder Hero is main game, but maybe I'll just call it like I'll find cast, right? So that maybe we can we can do podcasts with like other uh games as well, we can make it more versatile and so on. Okay, so I mean we can always change the name further, no problem. Alright, so uh I mean the people should already know about me and maybe we first uh just go to you first, right, Patrick? So, um maybe tell us about yourself or what should the audience or what should our scholars know about you? So first of all, uh, I'm from Austria, and yes, um, our guild is also based in Austria. So basically, we're in the center of, uh, of Europe, and um, I'm one of the driving forces behind the guild Elpenfist. So we are more or less uh, seven people who are in the management here, and we decide all together. So more or less, I'm I'm the driving force, but we decide all as a, a full team here in Alpenfist. Mm, okay. So and maybe we go to Stefan. Stefan, maybe you can introduce yourself. What would you, you know like us to know about you? Um. Hi. I'm Stefan, and I'm also from Austria. Um. I found uh, Patrick uh, over the Discord. Uh, I was looking for the German community, and <clears throat> that's so I found Patrick and uh, got a shoulder skip. Okay, sure. So, coming back to Patrick, um, how did um, no? When did you start the guild? When was it started? A few years back. Uh, our guild was founded in June uh, two thousand twenty-one, and has been continuously developed since then. So in 2021, what games did uh, was your guild in? Oh. <laughs> First of all, um, not really NFT games. We were playing uh, different games like League and Overwatch and uh, some competitive games, basically. Yeah. Hmm. So you guys were like a group of players that were just playing together, and or like were you like a competitive pro team? Yeah, more or less, yes. Some of our players are really strong players, um, competitive players, and some of other uh, of their other players are just friends and happy to play with them. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So there were some uh, pro players, like you mentioned. There were a few of your uh, like your management members were like top five hundred and then uh, national players for the uh, Austria Overwatch team, right? So exactly. were they were they in like Overwatch League at any point of time? No, only in the national team. Okay, in the national team. Because so I mean... they played in the in, in the registration of the national team. So, um, in the second quarter, I guess. Um, but overall, 
Um, they they were not uh, interested in playing in Overwatch League or something like contenders and, and those stuff. Um, but they are happy to play in top five hundred and and yep, that's it more or less. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, because the I think the logistics of contenders and Overwatch League is a bit tough as well like you have to leave home and all that. i think it's it's the time you, you know the time between working and playing is pretty tough when you're playing when you want to play in overwatch league for example you need to play um 12 hours per day uh training so compared to working time and sleeping it's uh, kind of difficult mm, yeah it is a grind as well like you have to like dedicate full time right i think even contenders the players have to like dedicate it to be a full-time thing almost like a job so if you're yes. holding a, a, a full-time job outside and then you want to like i mean yeah it's, it's very difficult to be even being contenders okay so sidetracked a little bit and uh, stefan about yourself what's your gaming background like um <clears throat> normally i play um a lot of diablo and stuff like this yeah world of warcraft Diablo um, two, one, two, or three? Um, Diablo two and three, and World of Warcraft. Oh, but uh, I didn't play a lot in the last years. I was more interested in in cryptocurrency, and I was following Alex Becker, and he suggested yeah. Wonder Hero for the next upcoming game, and so. I was looking for uh, an opportunity to start early. Mm, okay, so you're one of the OGs who played Diablo 2, right? So I remember a bit of Diablo 2. Uh, I think I didn't play it a lot. I played Diablo 3. Um, Diablo 2 was popular back, was like 20? Was it 20 years ago? Because I remember my friends were playing it and we were like 18. So that was like good 20 years back when multiplayer and the yes, other was yes, popular years. yeah that was that was one of the you're one of the ogs uh world of warcraft i i, I wasn't really into it i'm not an mmo person but obviously it's huge as well it has a huge community base behind it okay so going back let me just check my script let's see what other questions are. oh yeah so come back to patrick when you set up the guild right so originally you guys were just like a group of gamers, um, close friends playing competitively. So when you finally set up a guild and you guys decided to you know, come into NFT gaming, what was your like objective or what was your vision for the guild? That's a good question. Um, as I told you, we are a, a competitive guild, yeah, and our primary focus, as well as being of our players, okay, and the progression and the competitive scene so that that's what we are aiming for mm, so more of like esports uh top ranks exactly. yes going on as well how about yourself stefan so stefan you sound to me like more of a, a mmo player right because you play diablo you play world of warcraft like um how does yeah. how, huh? i mean what what made you interested in wonder hero because you mentioned that you got a recommendation maybe from one of your friends uh, but like, what made you, like, really interested into the game and what made you, like, carry on playing it? Um, I found, I found Ronda here over Alex Becker YouTube channel, yeah. Oh, and so he talks about, he talks about cryptocurrency and Ronda Hero was one of his suggestions for the upcoming games. And, and then... I started looking at the game when it's released and I try to find a community because um, when I play it alone, it's it's kind of feel boring and, and you, I, leave, I leave the game and don't play it anymore. And that's, that's why it's a great opportunity for me to find the uh, Alpine Fist. Um, I got a lot of help in developing in the uh, characters and equipment and uh, it's it's a cool uh, team play as I say it as it is yeah we talk a lot about setups and how to beat bosses and that's really really interesting and cool mm, so more or less it's the community aspect whereby 
because like you mentioned um i mean wonder hero is technically a mobile game that's uh i mean battle stars i mean, was called uh battle divas Slay maker back when it was on google play so technically as a mobile game obviously it's very uh solo oriented like like most people would just play on their mobile and then they care they play for like an hour or two and then they will just carry on playing other games or they go back to you know their daily lives or work and studies and so on so you just wanted to a group to talk about strategy uh get really dive into the game and so on so so far what do you find so f- this is still for stefan so far what do you find interesting about the game is it the you know the potential for uh making profits or is it more from a gameplay perspective that keeps you playing in the game um <clears throat> what me keeps playing is um the pvp and uh, how to stay in in gold or platinum whatever yeah and here to find the, the right setup for your budget yeah and that's that's why i like to talk with um like-minded guys about how how you can bring your setup to the next level Hmm. so more or less is the competitive aspect right like uh staying in the particular rank or bring going up to the next rank and the strategy behind right the setups and all that so more of a gameplay and less of the you know the profits and the earnings side because, I mean, a lot of people are coming into play to earn games for just the earning aspect, right? They just hear the, uh, they just want to make money, especially, um, I, I do have, uh, X Infinity scholars. I have one of the huge scholars from Philippines as well. Their main objective is to make money, right? So the gameplay wise, but, um, I mean, from some of my, my personal experience from some of my, uh, Philippine scholars as well, like, uh, X Infinity is more of just playing to, make money because honestly the game itself is not that fun even though it's competitive but when some of the, one of or the scholars came over to wonder wonder hero he mentioned he actually liked the gameplay so he was actually enjoying playing the game a lot more than playing axie and then he that made him wanted to you know stay in the game and that that's a that's a i mean that's a good sign to me as well because at least they enjoy the game as well as they have some potential for earning Okay, for okay for yourself. Um, I remember Patrick, you talked about like for your guild, right? When you started the guild, um, I mean, you guys were looking at many games because there's so many play to earn games, right? And you had a very strict criteria of what games that your guild will invest in. So, what made Wonder Hero fulfill your criteria? Um, with <clears throat> first of all. We just do a lot of research. Uh, the complete team is uh, doing a lot of research and about the team, about the gameplay itself. It is possible to, uh, to be competitive. As you said, uh, in uh, Exe, is is boring to play, but it's also uh, a PvP game. But um, you know, for, for a professional player, um, yeah, the game needs to be a little bit deeper and harder to play and uh, more easy to learn and hard to master. Uh, those uh, things are also important for us to know. And also the, the, the team background. If it's the, the team um, transparent, the project transparent, all visible, that's uh, really important criteria for us um, that we uh, decide to move into the game or invest into the game. Mm, okay. So transparency of the development team, um, gameplay has to be, like you mentioned, PvP oriented. And the something that strikes me as interesting is that you mentioned um, easy to learn, but hard to master. Because for Axie, actually, it's kind of like it, I, I think. But what, what that differentiates uh, between why I find like Wonder Hero a bit more fun as compared to Axie is that there's a little bit more variety to the, especially in the uh the adventure mode, the PvE mode. There's a little bit more variety. There's a bit of story and there's a bit more variety in the enemies and their like different abilities and status effects that isn't even though it's present in Axie, but especially in the PvE mode, their adventure mode, 
it was really, really stale, right? It was very boring for the adventure mode. If the adventure mode is like half as interesting as like Wonder Heroes, then I think they could have a lot more success on, on that area. But in terms of like the hard to master part, I do, a, I think Axie is also pretty, pretty deep as well when you go to the top levels because of the, the meta and so on. And there's a lot of counterplay. But it's, I mean, for Wonder Hero, I think it's pretty new in the PvP meta per se. So I will, I'm not seeing that deep level of counterplay, uh, from Wonder Hero, uh, compared to Axie. Axie, there's a lot more counterplay and then, uh, different, like you can bring in different teams to counter what the meta is. And then even if you are countered, there's still a way to win other than just luck, right? Uh, depends on the player choices, the, their decision making. Um, okay, so other yes. than, um, oh yeah, sure, there, carry on, yeah. Faith, there is, there's one point, um, now the PvP mode is out to play, yeah, so, but um, they will release a, a eSport um, PvP mode where you can um, drag and drop your uh, heroes where you want, so that will be interesting uh, for the turn-based PvP uh thing to the positioning is super important in this game and to use their abilities at the right moment and that will be really interesting for us um uh, from from the pvp perspective mm, that, that's also yeah there's one other question i wanted to ask as well like when you you mentioned that uh actually i, I listened i heard the ama as well and the ceo of one hero Ethan, he also mentioned that they are looking to make it um real time real time turn based strategy and i was thinking like they it's there must be because the game from uh, battle stars as well as from uh battle diva slay maker was just an auto battler for the arena mode so in order to totally convert it to a turn based real time strategy right there must be some sort of uh, there must be a lot of challenges i can see i can foresee some of the challenges that they're going to have but uh what what Patrick, what do you think? What do you think? What are the changes they need to make in order to make the real time turn based strategy successful? I think there is uh, nothing much to do. So basically, they need to, to connect the players, like you no know, other, for example, Clash Royale, yeah? if you know this mobile game. Um, there is a PvP mode. Yeah? And for me, it's um, simply the same uh, thing to do. Let the players play, and you will see what happens at, the, at this point. And you have to change later on the meta or changing stats from equipment or effects, you know. And this will also affect um, the gameplay. But um, I tried it several times um, with uh, in the PvE mode. Um, to change the positioning and, and check what the, what the autoplay is doing. And sometimes autoplay is a is a real genius, <laughs> okay? And he he win the round easy, and sometimes he can't do it. So that's why there are some characters they mm, doing strange moves all the time uh, when they when there is a, a, a opponent in front of them, and only that uh, that thing, okay? they can avoid by um skip this autoplay thing in pvp and let's play the players mm. how about you stefan what do you think what changes to the game mechanics do you think need to happen in order to make like real time pvp like playable or interesting i think the, it's it's really not much to do yeah um important is Two players, two real players play against each other, uh, like in a chess or wherever, and um, everyone moves their character, and a meta will arise. I say, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's hard to to tell what changes they need now. Yeah? Um, they have to implement uh, the feature that two live players can play each other, and then we will see which meta will be the strongest. And I hope they will change it, like in seasons, yeah, the, that 
every one or two, three months they, they change up the, the meta and then it will be a great year. Hmm. Yeah. I was thinking more along the lines like it's just right now in the auto battler, right? The offense team always the full team goes first. I was thinking that if they were to make it real time, you need to have a fair system whereby you can't have the one team moving all the four players first, right? They'll give too big an advantage to the player who moves first. So I was thinking along the lines that it's turn-based whereby it's a little bit like Axie whereby uh, the one person uh, moves their first hero first and then the second person moves their first hero uh, following that. And then the first player, player A, moves their second hero and then player B moves their second hero. And I was thinking along the lines like whoever goes, how to decide which player A or player B who goes first, it can be uh, like a random RNG thing. Because in XE, they defined, they decided the, the the move order, right, by a stat called speed in XE Infinity, which is like, uh, it's part of the breed, like certain classes are faster speed, like birds always move faster compared to reptiles, yeah. which are moving slower. So that's their way of balancing around it. So I was thinking like in order to, you know, make it fair for the, for the Wonder Hero live gameplay, right? Since you don't have a speed stat, um, probably they can use the, the order, like because we order our heroes like one, two, three, four, right? So one will always be the first one to go first. And whether player A or player B, whoever goes first, it's just a coin toss. So in the short term, maybe a player A is really lucky. He gets like move, to move first, uh, out of 10 times he move, gets to move first seven times out of 10 times. And he gets the advantage of, because the first mover always is the first hero that does the damage, right? So the first mover actually has the advantage there. They're the first one in the whole turn to do damage. But in the long run, if you do, do it in a coin toss, so it should still be fair. So like if you're as a player over 100 games, you should still have a 50% chance, 50-50 chance of like you getting player A and 50-50 of you getting player B. Then... Yeah, I was also thinking along the lines and also the like the queue times. I was wondering if the player base is big enough for the multiplayer queue times to be decent. Like whether Black Iron, obviously there's a lot of people in Black Iron. But when you go up the ranks like in Legendary where there's only like how many players are there in Legendary right now? I think one hundred and sixty. Yeah, because if there's only hundred and sixty, like across the whole world 160 in the legendary pool, I was thinking like the queue times might be really long, right? Like because it's how it's not easy to get 160 players to match up, especially when you only play PvP for like five, ten minutes. Because most of the time we lock into PvP, we play it, we like spend 10, 20 minutes, and then we continue playing PvE and so on. But if you are stuck there waiting for a game, right, for like 30 minutes and you don't get a match, then it's gonna be quite mm -hmm. annoying especially so i was wondering like that to me i think that challenge of like the the multiplayer uh game times is i think is the main big big challenge for like a game that doesn't have a very big pvp player base yet but the turn-based thingy yeah that one is quite easy to solve okay so that is the oh yeah so talking about the live gameplay side um how about like the esports side what what do you think like does Wonder Hero have like future as an esports game? Uh for Patrick, yeah. I think uh Wonder Hero um uh yes. For me yes. Um Professional players make their uh, living from playing. So in NFT games it's also possible to earn for uh uh, for all people, small prices every day for the everyday life, yeah. And I think um, compared to the other PV or eSport games, um, there will be a big player base. About I want to earn a little bit, um, but there will be um, a, a also small but, but significant player base who want to compete. Uh, with other players, like in all those other mobile games where you don't earn NFTs, you pay money to be the best. Yeah, I think that will be the same here. Like as I, as I told someone before, um, it's like Formula One. Okay, 
um, the, the team with the bigger money has better cars. And it will be the same here. So for this perspective, NST games are a really, really good opportunity um, for, for eSports to make it um, uh, interesting for the whole world, like other sports, uh, normal sports, you know? Mm, I think for like for the game to be like esports viable in my opinion, there has to be more I mean first and foremost there has to be a real time PvP campaign, right? And nobody wants to watch auto battler as an esports. It's it's quite boring, right? Just like have two CPUs battling against each other. There's no tactic there's no tactics part. So right, I think yeah. the, the real time PvP has to be there in order for it to even get anywhere near to being talked of as an esport. And other than that, I think competitions need to be pop be pop up as well. Like there has to be because as a professional player, right, you you want to be the best, right? And it, the ladder itself is not enough to prove that you're the best. You have to like have a tournament whereby there's a prize pool of maybe like uh maybe the, in the beginning the prize pool is gonna be small. Like first place gets one thousand dollars worth in crypto, right? But it's still a prize. Then you you mm -hmm. every then the pro players are gonna you know bring their best teams. Thing of strategies and they're going to try their best to win that 1000 then as the tournaments grow bigger and bigger tournaments like in a year maybe it starts with like maybe just five tournaments and then next year it gets more popular then becomes 10 tournaments and it becomes like a circuit so players will go to each tournament and then there'll be strategies and all that a bit like halfstone like when halfstone is an when I watched halfstone uh, esports back then they started with very little tournaments only blizzard ones and then slowly, slowly, there were more events coming up and then there were big ones by Blizzard and then the smaller ones by the other organizers. And that made the, the scene a lot more interesting. Then you, they, you have a, um, like, you always see the same pro players, like the top 50 players, the pros, who always end up in the tournaments itself. So that, that is when the esports part get interesting. So when the game gets more exposure, more tournaments, then there will be where the sponsors will want to come in because the sponsors want to get their brands be seen right by all the by the audience and so on when there's live streams and so on so i think all this has to go hand in hand but first and foremost the first step by the devs have to make it a uh, real time and then slowly slowly they have to grow the player base and it's going to be a long-term thing i'm i think i'm thinking like it has to be at least the game has to last at least like five years or uh, like to, for it to develop any esports future prof i mean how long has league of legends been around like 15 years 10 years yes. at least. I think, uh... Yeah, because I played Dota All Stars when it was like in Warcraft 3, um, Warcraft 3 mod, and that was like close to 15, 15, 20 years ago, right? And then it's when Dota 2 came about, it's only in the last 10 years, was it? I, I forgot when Dota 2 started. Seemed to me to be quite recent. But the Dota scene has been around for a good 20 years before it, like, it got to the level of popularity that it enjoys now. So I think the same has to be said for games like Wonder Hero. They have to they have to go for the long haul, right? Five years, ten years in order for it to be esports. Yes, viable. that's right. Hmm. Yes, that's right. Uh thankfully Wonder Hero isn't one of those quick win games for uh early investors and those people who want to earn quick. Um here you should think in long term, yeah, uh, which is also interesting. Uh, uh, of the whole gaming community, NFT gaming community. Mm, what 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 steps? Mm, I, I was thinking, how do you think they can like convince the player base that they're here for the long term? Like, is there any changes they need to make? Um, I think okay. First of all, then they need to uh, uh, develop um what they want to okay so because there is uh really much in common so um and they need to completely finish all the features and decide by wonder hero team um have to be active and working that's the first uh the first thing uh, what, what then okay only then in my opinion, it makes sense to make great marketing to go really public because um um, if the game is growing too fast, uh, it will die fast. So, yeah, that's uh, that's my opinion. Especially in NFT games, it's, it's highly risky to to grow fast. 
are too fast. Mm. Uh, they need to develop all that stuff and fix all that problems. And if you have an extremely fast-growing player base, you also need to bring all the features uh, in double or triple time. And, and uh, that's not healthy for, for the game and the ecosystem itself. Mm, okay, so in your opinion, actually growing too fast is actually a bad thing. Yes, exactly. Because it puts a lot of pressure on the development team to rush the, the development of the game, right? And what yeah. you're thinking is that maybe the, the devs definitely need time. Because Patrick has mentioned that you yourself do come from a programming background. Yes. Mm, so you definitely know, understand that it takes time for you know, uh, the devs to put features that they want into the game. So that, that's why you, you feel like they need uh, to grow slow so that they have time to so-called complete the game, complete their vision of the base game first before they start to like put patches and they start to like put extra features and so on. You told you told me before you were playing uh, Warcraft, yes, Dota, yeah, Warcraft, and, and yes, exactly. Those are one of, the, of uh, uh, this is one of those games uh, with slow development progress. Okay, and the team tried to make uh, to put their visions and ideas inside the game. So. If you grow fast, you're more community driven. And um, when uh, the majority is crying, oh, it's not working, you need to fix that all the time. So all that cool stuff, okay, that really cool and fancy stuff will be every time in the background. So that, that's my opinion here. Uh, that's why slowly growing is, is better than faster growing. Mm, I, I think I get your point. That means if there's uh, too much pressure from a big player base. The team is uh, have to be focused on bug fixing or patching instead of uh, developing the cool stuff, right? Like new heroes, new features, yeah. which is like the vision of the dev is. So how about itself? It's more like their their mm -hmm. ideas, their ideas, and what they make happy. For example, in in, in Blizzard, um, ten years ago, okay, they decided to implement all that stuff they want pretty cool and and fancy stuff yeah and now uh now it's a it's owned by activision or, or microsoft and now it's a, di a different way they go through okay how to make money and how to make uh, as a quick as possible money and and how to fix all those uh, small problems um patches and and bug fixes are though those things yes but when the community is every time crying we need more uh for example heroes and they have not enough time to bring new heroes up plus the feature uh, they want to bring up it will be really complicated and and they are moving into one mistake and another mistake because every time when they set up a new line of code there will be there will be problems you know so if they have time to test and time to check if it's working, especially when you are playing NFT games where money or big money is involved, okay, so investment is involved, they need to prove all that it's working and working well and making fun and all that stuff that, that need to be uh, done first of all before they uh, can make it public. In other games, they can do that easily. Just um, uh, change numbers and it's done. And if the community is crying, just change it, change it back. But it's not working when there is that much money uh, inside of a project. They can't do it or you know what I mean. Mm, yeah, I get what you mean. Yes, yes. Because uh, just like you mentioned, when there's like too much pressure from the outside or like from the investors at the top, when there's money like on the line, but as you as a developer, as a coder, you have no time to focus on your vision, right? Like the thing, cool things you want to bring into the game. Yes. And yeah, because I mean, your, your, your CEO is saying that do this, do this. And then, so you can't, you can't do anything else. You have to focus on the bug fix. How about yourself, Stefan? Exactly. As, a, as, a, as a player, what's, what's, your, what's your view? Like, what, what do you think is like uh, when the hero needs to, what do you think as, because you've been playing the game, right? Since it launched. So what features do you think Wonder Hero needs to add in order for you to, to see it to be like a, like a blooming esports game or like to be a long, uh, to be a long standing game like World of Warcraft? Um, 
when I when I look on the on the Steam game on Battlestar, and I like the the events uh, a lot. So, for example, it's uh, uh, Oktoberfest or or Easter or something like this, and I think it will be a cool of the year to to make something like a quest line to do some um, some some tasks and you you get a special skin for example there is a, a a ling skin for chinese new year something like this and i think it will be cool if you can earn it for finishing some task yeah once in, in one in two months something like this yeah so you have a, ch a chance to get extra skins for uh, characters you don't use or or you don't can play, yeah, something like this. So, for example, in two three years, you you have a full roster in with just the the play time you invested. Hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. I I have played a little bit of Battlestar, and I do agree that the you know the content that they put out. Uh, it's actually quite regular and it's actually quite refreshing. Like, uh, actually, I've noticed that in the last few weeks, right, Battlestar actually had a graphics change. Like, they used to be the same graphics engine as Wonder Hero, but then they differentiated and they make they made all their graphics a little bit more 3D. And, uh, like, it was like a cell shaded 2D, 3D kind of thing. And there were, like, reflections and stuff with the, both the, the, on the environment as well as the heroes as well as the, the enemies as well so it's like a total graphical update and also like i mentioned there were events uh the link skin the chinese new year skin um then when maybe halloween comes around like what uh, overwatch did as well right when halloween come came around they had uh halloween team skins which was what attracted players to keep playing right they needed they wanted to earn those skins uh cos purely cosmetic doesn't change the uh pvp aspect but still it's quite cool right to to get some cosmetic stuff yeah, I agree. Those events and updates as well. And okay. Wonder Hero, it's it's an NFT, and so it's not only cosmetics. <laughs> uh, if you're lucky, you get a skin with thousand HP, and if you have bad luck, it's it's fifty de um, fifty defense or something like this. Yeah? Mm, I agree. I think in the <clears throat> Battle Battlestar version, they also have like special. Um, they have different PVE quest lines. So I remember, like, if you progress to like the later chapters, eleven or twelve, you actually unlock like uh, dedicated quest lines for like Nightingale, Fuma, and dedicated quest line for some of the heroes as well. Where if you play those quest lines, you get to unlock their shards for their legendary weapons, right? Their exclusive like five star weapons that you cannot get from anywhere else so i think this like them just implementing those ideas into the wonder hero game is actually pretty good because it pushes players to want to upgrade their team so that they can go to the later chapters because i think it only unlocks for uh players who have cleared like chapter 11 12 or maybe even chapter 13 before they can go to get the bonus stages where the enemies are always super tough it's really hard then that is like a big incentive right for the existing player base to push to complete that and only the top players will get to you know get access to that special uh special pv events and then they get to win special skins and special nfts and so on okay so um let's uh i'm gonna keep podcast has been uh, for a while but uh let's try and wrap it up um maybe from you yourself patrick anything else that maybe you want to like give a shout out to or maybe you want to uh you know tell the audience or the scholars that if there's any anything exciting upcoming for the guild that maybe you want to like keep a lookout for um for our guild is how to say um, um there is always something happened in our guild and we are progressing very quickly quickly so we try to do the best okay from for our team to grow and and to have fun together so this every time an ongoing process but for now i can say um for the future 
uh, at the end of this month, we will provide new slots um, to play for PvP players, <laughs> competitive players who want to like to join our team and play together with us. Mm, so you're talking about uh, scholarship applications, right? So for yeah, uh, um, mm. I I would say I would say oh, we don't we don't call them uh, scholars in our guild because they are joining our team and there are members um, from from our perspective they are members and players. Um, they have the same when they join the team they have the same rights than all other players you know so there we make the no, no difference for us is, um yeah mm, so they'll be it's a full team, member team members instead of just scholars right yeah you're joining the guild and automatically if you're a cool guy and pvp focused you're uh, a full member and you're playing for the guild yes mm, exactly. so how can people apply uh through the website yeah, they can apply it uh, through our website. Also, they can, um, I'm not a bad person, so they can contact all of our leadership and, and get in contact with us. We don't block messages. We answer to all messages. Um, yes, and we have also on our website a form where you can fill in. But yes, feel free to contact us. Mm -hmm. So um, at the website now, so there's a scholarship tab. Yep, so you can you can check out the details there. And where is the form from the website? Like I, I don't really see it. Also at the um you can, there you can join the Discord channel and automatically in our on our Discord channel there will be a, a message. Um in okay. the, um, I think it's called scholarship registration or here. Okay. I think nope. So from the website, yep. at the bottom of the website I see the Discord L5 is. So join the Discord, and then from the Discord channel itself, uh, let me just scroll through on the scholarship registration, right? And then there is, uh, click on the link. Uh, same, it brings me back to the website, but I don't see, uh, is it here? Okay, I think I'm clicking on it. Yes, I saw it. So it's the first box in the register yeah. for scholarship. There's a link that says for registration. And if you click on it, it will bring you to a form. And then you can fill up this form. Exactly. And, yes. yeah, and then the team will get in touch. So the team will get in touch with players through uh, Discord or through email. What's their means of contact? Um, we go, uh, the most case, we are, we are in, get in contact with um, by Discord. Yes. Okay. That's by the, the fastest way here. Mm. So join Discord channel, provide the Discord ID, yeah, which is available on the form, and the team will contact you there. Okay, so anything exactly, else yeah. you would like to shout out? No, not really. So from our side, I think it's all thought. Um, um, yes. Okay. And for yourself, Stefan, any shout outs that you want to do? Like, um, For me, it's fine. <laughs> Okay, sure, sure. Thank, thank you guys. Uh, thank you both of you guys for you know, sparing your valuable time for this podcast. And for the audience as well, we hope to do more future podcasts, uh, either maybe with other founding members of the team, of the guild, or maybe other uh, play, top players in the team as well, right? Then we can, with the players, we can probably talk about more about the, the game meta, like uh, the more interesting stuff about the game it's specific itself. Okay, thank you very much guys for watching or listening and we will see you guys next time.